John F. Kennedy ended his famous speech at Rice University with a detailed description of the challenge he was asking NASA to take on, to land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth in less than a decade. His words on that day act as one of the best windows into just how uncertain and dangerous the race to the moon really was. But if I were to say, my fellow citizens, that we shall send to the moon 240,000 miles away from the control station in Houston, a giant rocket more than 300 feet tall, the length of this football field, made of new metal alloys, some of which have not yet been invented, capable of standing heat and stresses several times more than have ever been experienced, fitted together with a precision better than the finest watch, carrying all the equipment needed for propulsion, guidance, control, communications, food, and survival on an untried mission to an unknown celestial body and then return it safely to Earth re-entering the atmosphere at speeds of over 25,000 miles per hour, causing heat about half that on the temperature of the sun, almost as hot as it is here today, and do all this, and do all this, and do it right, and do it first. Before this dictate is out, then we must be bold. In this video, we are going to share some of the lesser known moments in the Apollo 11 mission, focusing mainly on the story of how close the story of mankind's greatest triumph came to ending a disaster. It was a scenario that came so close to actually occurring that President Richard Nixon prepared a speech in the event the Apollo 11 astronauts never returned home. Every astronaut knew the inherent danger in being part of the Apollo program. The very first mission had ended in tragedy when the infamous Apollo 1 fire took the lives of three astronauts, Roger Chafee, Ed White, and Gus Grissom, while they were still sitting on the launch pad. That horrible fire almost ended the entire space race before it had even left the ground. From that point on, every astronaut had been served a reminder of just how dangerous every single day in the space program could be. Over the next few years, all these men faced their own situations in which their lives were nearly lost in pursuit of reaching the moon. For example, Neil Armstrong almost lost his life during his very first trip out of Earth's orbit, when a malfunctioning thruster on Gemini 8 sent him and his co-pilot rolling violently through space. In that case, Armstrong managed to bring the vehicle back under control only moments before he would have lost consciousness from the G-Force. Stories like Armstrong's are numerous and could make an entire video on its own, but we're going to jump ahead to the nail-biting events of the first moon landing itself, when more than once, the most famous space mission in history nearly came to disaster. Apollo 11 launched in July of 1969 and reached the moon four days later. While previous Apollo missions had reached lunar orbit, the task of landing and eventually taking back off from the moon was still unprecedented and came with immense risk. As they prepared for landing on the moon, the astronauts of Apollo 11 faced their first crisis. With only nine minutes to go until touchdown, Neil Armstrong realized there was a problem. Because of an unexpected burst of pressure that had occurred when the lunar module had disconnected from the command module, they were no longer on track for the designated landing spot. An area on the moon's surface called the Sea of Tranquility had been specially selected for landing, but the lunar module was on course to overshoot that destination by about four miles. Making the situation even more desperate as Armstrong searched for a free spot of boulders and crevices to land the vehicle, their fuel began to run dangerously low. With no more time to be picky, Armstrong guided the Eagle down to the rocky surface and managed to land softly amid the jagged terrain of the moon's surface. Soon after landing, the next crisis began. The new issue occurred while Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were suiting up for the iconic first moonwalk. When they returned, Aldrin noticed a one inch long piece of plastic lying in a small pile of moon dust in the cabin. Immediately, he knew they were in trouble. What he realized was that as the astronauts were putting on their iconic life support backpacks, one of the men had bumped into the control panel without realizing it and snapped a circuit breaker off the switchboard. Though every button and switch on the instrument panel served an important function, the particular switch that had broken had an even more vital job, sending power to the engine that would launch the lunar module off the surface of the moon. Unless the astronauts could find a way to fix the broken switch, they were in danger of being stuck on the moon. The problem was relayed back to Mission Control and they immediately got to work looking for a solution to work around the broken switch. While the astronauts slept, Mission Control worked through the night, but came back with no answers to the problem. To make matters worse, if the lunar module couldn't make it off the surface of the moon, there was nothing fellow astronaut Michael Collins, who waited in orbit in the command module, would be able to do to help. 
The situation was so dire that back in Washington, a somber speech was being prepared by presidential speech writer William Sapphire. Though NASA was still optimistic that a solution would be found, plans needed to be made in case rescuing the astronauts became impossible. If no answer to the circuit breaker problem was found and the astronauts were forced to be left on the moon, it was decided that mission control would close down communications and a clergyman would commend their souls to the deepest of the deep in a public ritual that was similar to burial at sea. The president would then make personal calls to the astronauts' wives to deliver the nation's condolences. Finally, President Nixon would deliver Sapphire's speech to the heartbroken public. It's a powerful speech and we'll play a reading of it at the very end of the video. Luckily, a burst of creativity by Aldrin meant those tragic plans never came to pass. Sometimes the most complex problems have the simplest solutions. In this case, the answer to the predicament that hundreds of rocket scientists were not able to solve was a felt-tipped pen that Aldrin happened to have in the pocket of his suit. Because nobody can finish this story better than the man himself, here is Buzz Aldrin with his first-hand account. <clears throat> so we get up in the morning, and, uh, and they say, uh, for mission control, we couldn't find any way to get around that circuit breaker. So instead of pushing that in at about 10 seconds prior, uh, as the computer's counting it out, we want you to try and push it in two hours ahead. Okay. So I look, what can I use? I look at my little finger and there's, there's electricity behind there. I'm not sure <laughs> that that's gonna work. So and we had a ballpoint pen, uh, but that's metal. And that's not maybe so good. But I had gotten a felt tip pen so I could read the writings on the rendezvous charts. So I used the Felt tip pen two hours before. Hey, we got circuit, we got power. <laughs> so we were coming pretty close to not being enough. able to come home. After successfully launching from the moon and completing a rendezvous with Michael Collins in the command module, the men of Apollo 11 hoped for a smooth journey back to Earth. However, before they could make it safely home, they had one more crisis to overcome. The heroes in this crisis were hard at work back on Earth. Three days before Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins returned home, an Air Force meteorologist named Hank Branley made a shocking discovery. Branley's job was to forecast the weather in order for spy planes to take photos of Soviet missile sites. To do this, he used a sophisticated and highly secretive weather satellite that nobody knew the US had even launched. Using this satellite, which was not even supposed to exist, he noticed a severe tropical storm system developing right over the location the Apollo astronauts were scheduled to splash down on. He estimated that if the module tried to land in the middle of such a storm, the parachute would be ripped to pieces and the force of the crash into the ocean would almost certainly be deadly. Branley scheduled a meeting in a parking garage with another Navy meteorologist named Sam Houston, who also had clearance to see the satellite images. Houston looked at the pictures and agreed with Branley's assessment of the incoming storm. He promised to take the information to his superiors in charge of the retrieval of the astronauts. However, the top secret nature of the satellite used to make the forecast put Houston in a tough spot. He could talk about the danger that the Apollo 11 astronauts were headed towards, but nobody was allowed to see the pictures that proved it. Deciding to put his entire career on the line, Houston went to his commanding officer and told him that the splashdown site needed to be changed. After some initial skepticism, NASA took Houston at his word and redirected the landing for a location 200 miles away. On July 24th, 1969, the astronauts finally returned to Earth and splashed down to sunny skies and calm seas. Meanwhile, at the previous landing site, a tropical storm tore through the area just as Brandley had predicted. Because of the top secret nature of the spy plane program, Brandley and Houston were not recognized for their role in saving the Apollo astronauts until 1995. Despite so many dangers and near misses, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins returned home to an adoring nation. The men spent a brief period in quarantine before reuniting with their families. Thanks to the hard work of all the men and women of the Apollo program and a little luck from a felt tip pen, the speech that was meant to eulogize the astronauts never needed to be delivered. However, its very existence speaks to the reality of the danger these astronauts faced and how close they came to never making it home. And now you can hear it for yourself. Here's Benedict Cumberbatch delivering, quote, 
in event of moon disaster. In the event of moon disaster, fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. But they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. These two men are laying down their lives in mankind's most noble goal, the search for truth and understanding. They will be mourned by their families and friends. They will be mourned by the nation. They will be mourned by the people of the world. They will be mourned by a Mother Earth that dared send two of her sons into the unknown. In their exploration, they stirred the people of the world to feel as one. In their sacrifice, they bind more tightly the brotherhood of man. In ancient days, men looked at the stars and saw their heroes in the constellations. In modern times, we do much the same. But our heroes are epic men of flesh and blood. Others will follow and surely find their way home. Man's search will not be denied, but these men were the first, and they will remain the foremost in our hearts. For every human being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come will know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind.